Hallelujah. First, I mean, uh, John, not first John, John chapter 3. I, I dealt with this last week, but I want to, you know, when you, you know when you preach something, Brother Johnny, it don't come out, God ain't done with it, don't come out all the way, you want, there's more to it. You ever had that, amen? Like, it's just, now I'm not done, the God's not done with it, amen? It come out right, amen? amen. Somebody say amen, but I want to clarify some things that I said, amen, last week, amen? Is that all right? Amen. Hallelujah, John chapter 3, amen. Good to see Elder and Mother McGowan back in the house. Amen. Yeah, he's, he's back, y'all. Yeah, here you go. Amen. 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 John chapter, amen, 3, amen. Good to see you all now, amen. Good to see Ann out, Ann. Good to see you. Amen. 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 Elder Paul, good thing. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 <laughs> Chapter 3 of John. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do, do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Somebody say amen. How many know you can't do nothing without God? Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Somebody say amen. Can he enter the, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and doers and hearers of God's word, and all God's children say amen. 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 You may have your seats in the presence of of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus said you must be born again. Amen. Amen. I had your head just take your seat because I will be doing some reading. I'm going over to 2 Corinthians. Amen. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 I want to say. In verse 17. Amen. Y'all with me? Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born of water and of the Spirit. Amen. Y'all with me? Amen. Just give me one amen. Just, just one amen in the house. Ain't nobody got to say amen. Just give me one. And let me know you're with me. Amen. Uh, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born of water and the Spirit to see the kingdom of of God. You must be. Somebody say amen. amen. Now there's a big controversy amen because they, Jesus said water and people all, you know, we always have controversies amen. We shouldn't have controversies if you understand spiritual things. Somebody say amen. amen. And then they, you know I've heard before, and I want to clarify this because amen, I know you heard the same thing. They say amen uh, praise God. You don't Baptism don't save you, amen. Praise God. Have you heard that before, amen? That baptism doesn't save you. If, if you have to get baptized, amen, with water, amen, then that's works. Somebody say amen. And Jesus did all the work. Somebody say amen. So, amen, you don't get baptized to be saved. You get baptized because you are saved. Come on, somebody. Amen. Baptism is an act of obedience, amen. Praise God. And the water, amen, praise God. But people don't make light of baptism. Somebody say amen. Because Water baptism is not a light thing. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Water baptism, we are buried with him in water baptism. Somebody say amen. Peter told the people in the book of Acts, amen, he said amen. He said be baptized for the remission of your sins, amen. Um, Peter, um, first Peter talks about, amen, baptism saves us, not the putting away of the flesh, amen, but a good, a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So baptism saves us, amen. Baptism, water cleanses our conscience. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Y'all with me? Amen. amen. So, and then, amen, 
praise God, but Jesus also said, amen, that the Holy Ghost is living water. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Uh, he told the woman at the, uh, at the, at the, at the, uh, at the, at the well, he told the woman at the well, he said, I got living water that you know not of. Amen. Then he told the people, amen, amen. He said, from your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Somebody say amen. amen. And the Bible says, amen, in Ephesians, amen, that we are washed by the water of the word. Come on, somebody. Amen. So, amen, we have the Holy Ghost that gives you, we have water, water, physical water that cleanses your conscience by faith, amen. We have the word of God, the water of the word will cleanse your mind, amen, and the Holy Ghost living water which renew your spirit. Come on, somebody. So you must be born by water and the spirit. Come on, somebody. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. That's free right there. Come on, somebody. Somebody give God some praise. Amen. So God don't just deal with just, just your spirit. God, the Bible said, we have everything in this life pertaining to life and godliness. God has given you everything in this life that pertains to life and godliness. Amen. Not only did he cleanse your mind, he cleansed your conscience, and he cleansed your spirit. Come on, somebody. So you must be born of water. Come on. So you don't have to argue anymore about those folks that say, oh, water don't save you. Just explain it to them. But let me explain about the water. Come on, somebody. Because the Bible said we're born again, not of an incorruptible seed. And when you were born of the flesh, amen, it took, some, it took a man's seed to be planted into a woman. A woman conceived and a woman brought forth that man child or that woman or that little girl Girl, somebody say amen. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, that's not the born again I'm talking about. You must be born of the spirit. You must be born of the word. You must be washed by the water of the word. The Bible says, amen, to husbands to love your wife like Christ loved the church. He sanctified it. He cleansed it with, with the washing of the water by the word. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So amen, we see amen that God deals with every area in your life yeah. when you are born again. Somebody say amen. amen. The scripture says that we have a divine nature. See, I, we talked about this last week, but there's somewhere I want to get to because God began to show me how nothing I am and how everything he is. I know that's some terrible yes, English. Yes. But I said, God showed me how nothing I am and how everything he is. Because without him, you can't do nothing. But with him, you can do everything. Come on, you can do all things through Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen. Jesus said, apart from me, you can Somebody say amen. amen. So God covered it all. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. He covered it all. And so we was talking about amen. How that amen. He covered everything. We went to amen. Praise God. To 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now you can follow me or you can hit it up here. But I'm going to be moving fast because I want to get to where the Lord, where the Lord led me to get to to finish this off. It says in 5. In 17 of 2 Corinthians, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Because he's born again, he's a new creature. Come on, somebody. Y'all want somebody say new creature? It says, All things are passed away. Behold, some things. I just want to see you listening. All things become. If any man is born again, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Your old habits pass away. That old nature pass away. Amen. Why? Because, uh, amen, Second Peter says you have a divine nature. Yes, oh. Amen. Somebody help. Amen. And that divine nature is the Holy Ghost, which is your amen. new nature, which makes you a new creature, which causes all things to pass away and all things become new because of your new nature, that divine nature that you receive when you receive Christ. Amen. Right. Are y'all with me? Amen. So you have a new nature. Uh -huh. yes. You are new creature. Yes. Oh, come on, somebody. Yes. New nature, new creature. Come on, somebody. Amen. So that means all things are new. Uh -huh. Come with me to 2 Peter. Mm. Is, this, is, this, is this all right? Watch this, 2 Peter, watch this. 
it says in verse 2, Grace, peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, according to according as his divine power have given unto us all things. Y'all see that? Do y'all see that? Nobody see that? That pertain unto life and godliness. I'll preach to myself. <laughs> through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory. Y'all see that? And virtue. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Y'all hear that? Amen. Amen. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. Lust. Jesus took away the sins of the world. You've been washed by the water of the word is the cleansing of the mind. Amen. Jesus took away the sin, but he didn't take away the lust. <laughs> Somebody help me. And lust, we found out, the scripture said, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. The lust is still there. The sin is gone, but the lust is there. But because you have a divine nature, see, before you got saved, you could not resist anything. Ooh, yeah. Whatever your flesh wanted, your flesh went and got. Somebody say that. Somebody help me. But when Jesus gave you divine power, the scripture says, now you have the power and the divine nature to resist the lust of the flesh. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Because lust, the Bible says, when it is conceived, it brings forth what? Sin. Amen. So lust is the doorway for sin. Amen. And lust in the Bible is desire or craving for what is forbidden. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. Lust is simply a desire or something that you crave to do. Something you can't stop doing on your own. Somebody better help me. Amen. But God has given you divine power. See, I used to be a drinker. Come on, somebody. I used to be a whoremonger. Come on, somebody. I used to stay in the strip clubs. But when I, when I received the Lord, yeah. he gave me divine power, a divine nature, and that divine power. Everything I used to do. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Father. Okay, no, I'm talking to some holy folks. I'm talking to some holy folks. Y'all ain't used to do nothing. Come on, somebody. Before you came to God, come on, somebody. You was fulfilling every lust. Come on, somebody. Because you had the nature of sin. You had a sin nature. Amen. Come on, somebody. And, and when God cleansed you, amen, he took away that nature. Yes. He took that sin nature away and gave you a divine nature. That's why the scripture said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yes, amen. See, you don't need the word. Come on, watch this, watch this. The word, watch this. It's the Holy Spirit you receive that causes, that convicts you. The Holy Spirit, the word comes forth. The Holy Spirit convicts and the Holy Spirit does the renewing of the spirit. Amen. That wasn't causing you because I didn't have no word or nothing. Mr. Love, what I got to say I just did a confession. Lord, mom ready. Everybody got on the phone. He wanna get saved. Tim wanna get saved. Oh Lord, everybody. My daddy even go, what? What? It's late, it's early in the morning. Thank you, Father. Everybody on the phone. Just my mom said, just confess the Lord Jesus. And when I said, Lord, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And I believe you raised him from the dead. Man, something hit me, mother. Boom! Oh, Lord! Holy Spirit hit my heart, man. And I went and got rid of everything that I knew was wrong. Nobody preached to me. Nobody taught something. Come on, somebody. It was that new nature that I received did not desire those things I used to do. What am I telling you? You can't stop what you're doing. You need God. Yes. Oh, Amen. 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 You need Jesus. Yes. Come on, somebody. But my, my, my friend asked me, how do you stop doing what you're doing? I didn't stop. Hallelujah. I died. Woo, yes. somebody help me. Yes. Come on, somebody. Because the Bible said I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I. But Christ live in me. And the life that I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Tim is dead. Is living. Y'all better help me up in this place. By faith, Christ is living in me. By faith, Christ is living in you. Boy, 
this is good stuff, boy. This is some good stuff. I said, you are a new creature. New nature. Come on, somebody. Divine power. God, no, see, you know what this tells me? How strong that flesh can be. Because God knew that you could not resist sin without him giving you some power. Almighty God said, I, I got to give them some power. Because that sin is strong. The Bible said, let not sin reign in your mortal body. That you should obey it from all the lust thereof. In other words, sin was reigning in your life. When you see the word reign, that means there's a king. King, sin was king in your life. But now, watch this, God and sin can't abide in the same temple. Amen. Ooh, somebody help me. I said the Lord, I said God and sin can't abide in the same temple. And the Bible said you are the temple of God. Why? God dwells in you now. And where's the kingdom of God? In you. And who's the king? Jesus. Oh, come on somebody. So sin is not reigning and abiding in me anymore. But that don't mean I still can't lust. Why? Because I'm in this flesh. Y'all help me. Now watch this. Watch this. First Peter, watch this. Now. It says in First Peter chapter 2. It says, wherefore, verse 1, wherefore lying aside all malice and guile and hypocrisy and envies and evil speaking as newborn babes. Y'all see that? Amen. Desire, that, that, that word desire is interchangeable with lust. Huh? When you look it up. It said desire the sincere milk of what? The word. Your desire should change because of your new what? Jesus said, man should not live by bread alone, but every what? See, see, watch this. When your nature change, your desire change. Okay. And you a new creature with a new nature, but you a newborn. <laughs> well, somebody help me, man. This good stuff, man. Hey, I said, you got a new nature. You a new creature. And you are newborn. Right. And a newborn desires milk. Your new nature should desire the word. word. That's right. Yes. Yes. And if you're not, see, you cannot desire the word and the world at the same time. Amen. Amen. If you desire, see, the reason why folks come to church, let me tell you something. The reason if you in church and you ain't getting nothing, I'm saying. You don't desire the word. Because Jesus spoke spiritually to those, amen, that had a desire to receive. He spoke spiritual things. And if you're not spiritual, you ain't going to receive nothing from the Lord. Why? Because the cares of this word, the world, chokes the word. That's what the Bible says. That seed, that word, if it's sown and you don't have a desire for it, It'll fall by the wayside. Yes, it It'll fall on stony ground because you got a heart and heart. Yes, or it yes. will fall among thorns and choke the word. Yes, amen. And a lot of folks fall in that category. Yes, amen. Come on, somebody. So when the preacher's preaching, ain't nobody <laughs> can't receive nothing the preacher's saying. Come on. Because you got four categories in church. One, two, three, four. Good ground, stony ground, thorns. Wayside. Yes, yes, ain't nobody saying that. Come on, somebody. But somebody that's getting it, come on. See, I don't have to be preaching, amen, for brother preaching a good word to my spirit. Come on, somebody. I'm just the way I am. That's how good the word is. Come on. The Bible say, taste and see that the Lord is gracious. Man, once you taste the Lord, you lose your natural mind for Jesus Christ. When you taste it to see that the Lord Newborn, 
When you're a new creature, when you're operating in your new nature. Somebody say amen. Your desire completely changed. But there are too many Christians, come on, fulfilling the lust of their flesh. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. So now because you're fulfilling that lust, the Bible said love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For the things that are in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life position. Yes. Oh, what is some good stuff. Paul ain't talking to sinners when he said walk in the spirit. The, the, a Christian, a, a sinner don't have that ability. Yes. A sinner don't have the ability to walk in the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He don't have that ability. But a Christian do. Yes, amen. A Christian has the ability to walk in the spirit yes. or fulfill the lust of their flesh. Yes, 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 amen. Somebody help me. Yes, amen. And the scriptures say make no provision for your flesh yes, yes, amen. to fulfill the lust yes. thereof. Yes, amen. Man, I'm going to say this. Yes, amen. Don't get mad with me. But that's why the Bible said, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Yeah. See, see, when you go out and marry someone not saved, you've made provision for your flesh. Come on, somebody. Yes, amen. Somebody better help me. Yeah. When you go out and hook up with an unbeliever, yeah. you're making provision for your flesh. Why do you think God told the children of Israel, don't marry folks from other nations? Don't when you come into the promised land, try them out. Somebody help me. Yes. And, and, and when a husband and wife, the Bible said a man shall leave his mother and father, cleave to his wife, they shall become what? One. One flesh. One flesh. So if you if you hook up that way, you've already made provision. Yes. Ooh -wee. Boy, I'm gonna get a truth. Yes. Somebody help me. Yes. It's the truth. Yes. You make provision yes. for your flesh. Yes. To fulfill the lust thereof. Why? Because if I hook up to you, watch this, Elder. If I hook up to Elder, and then we just put it on. Watch this. I'm just using an example. If I hook up, hey, baby, I'm just an example. Mother, come here. Let me just go on this one. Mother, come here. Let me get that right. This on, this on YouTube. Let me get that right. Let me get that right. If I hook up, come on somebody, to an unbeliever, watch this, we're not two flesh, we one flesh. Now if she's an unbeliever and I'm a believer, somebody say amen, she fulfills the lust of her flesh. And she becomes provision for me. Provision is her. Because she's fulfilling her flesh, and she's provision for me because we one flesh. Yes, amen. And I love her. Yes. Come on. Yes. I have an affection for her. Yes. And the Bible says if you if you are if you're married, amen, you care for the things, not love the things. The Bible says in Romans chapter 7, when you're married to your believing wife, that you care for the things of the world of how you may please your wife. Y'all better, better get the revelation behind this thing. I said if she's saved, huh, you still care for the things of the world. Huh? You still care if she's wearing Dolce Cavada. Come on, somebody. You still care if she's wearing coach bags. Huh? You still care that she's getting her nails done. You still care that she's looking good for you. Somebody say amen. Why? Because you have an affection for her. So you care for the things of the world that you may please her. But now if you got an unbeliever, huh, you right there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Provision is there. Yeah. So man, you gotta walk on eggshells the rest of your life. Because you're a cop. Yes, but when you're yoked together with a believer, yes. somebody say amen. amen. She'll pray for you. Yeah. She'll pray with you. What I told you, the woman did. She's a secure. She secures her man. Come on. Yeah. Help me means to secure. She holds him up. Come on somebody. She bears his pain. Come on somebody. Why? Because seed in her. She carries the seed and she's the one that travails. Somebody help me say amen. Amen. She's the one. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. 
when you got a woman by your side. Come on. But he said, be not unequally yoked by, because you have a new creature. You a new creature, have a new nature, you a newborn. Boy, this is some good stuff. This is some good stuff, man. I'm about to, woo! Hallelujah. He said, as new born babes desire the sincere milk of the word. Your desire change. Your desire change, elder. My desire change. When Antonio, his son, came to me and brought me to church, he came to my house. My desire change. I said, man, where a church at? He said, man, my dad is an elder. Man, you want to go to my dad? Yes. An elder came up to me. Deacon. Yes, sir. You was deacon then? Yes, sir. Deacon, deacon, deacon. <laughs> deacon, y'all. Deacon came up to me and said, man, you want to come up and get me filled with the Holy Ghost? You want to receive the gift of tongues? I said, yes. Come on, somebody. All that happened that Sunday. Come on, somebody. Because my desire changed. You know, when people come to church, don't act. When you look around and see folks shouting and glorifying God, man, that we ain't always been like this. <laughs> we used to be stanky legged and everything else. Come on. Somebody help me. My son told us some pop, pop locking. My son told us some pop. Brother, we was. We was <laughs> Judas heart before he entered him. 
He put it on his mind before he entered him. Come on. You, Jesus said you look upon a woman to lust after her. You've already committed adultery where? In your thoughts. Uh, come on, somebody. Like I said, Les, we ain't never seen no, amen, somebody just sporadically steal. <laughs> they, they thought it out. <laughs> That's just a manifestation of what they thinking. They never seen nobody sporadically just commit adultery. Oh, hey, how you doing? Let's commit adultery. <laughs> Something was thought out. So the word of God got to fix your mind. Oh, somebody help me. And now you need to be taught the word. Come on, somebody. You need a teacher. You need a teacher. Tell your neighbor, you need a teacher. You need a teacher. Come with me to John. Boy, this is some good stuff. This is good stuff. This this good stuff, man. John chapter, first John, I'm sorry, first John. First John. Woo wee! Boy, this is some good stuff, fellow Paul. God is good, man. Huh? Ain't God good, y'all? God is good. To taste and see that the Lord is good. This is a good word. Amen. This is a good word here. Amen. This is a good word. First John chapter 2. We there? Yes, sir. Are you there? Amen. Verse 27. Watch this. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth where? Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Is everybody there? Amen. But the anointing which you have received abideth where? Amen. And you need not what? Amen. But the same anointed what? Teaches you all. And is what? Truth. And, and is no what? And even as it have taught you, you shall abide in him. But the anointing which you have received abideth in you, and you need not any man. Y'all don't need pastor. I'm going to show you what I'm saying. Cause I'm not the teacher. Woo. <laughs> oh yes, sir. See, 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 see. You know how we got false doctrine in the pulpit because they're not letting the teacher teach. Woo. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Oh, that's another shot right there. You wonder why you got all these denominations. You wonder why you got all these different type of doctrine. Doctrine means teaching. Woo. And the reason why you got all these doctrine of men, the Bible calls it, is because. John. I'm gonna show you something. Come on, I'm gonna come on show you something. I gotta qualify what I'm saying. Gotta qualify what I'm saying. Mm. John chapter. Let me find it. Let me find it. Is this all right? Amen. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Mmm. Now, woo, yes, watch this. John chapter 14, verse 26, are you there? But the comforter, which is the, is the what? Whom the Father shall send in who? He shall what? Some things. And, and bring what? Whatsoever I've said unto you. He said the Holy Ghost shall teach you all things. Not Pastor Tim. The Holy Ghost shall teach you all things, and man, when he teach you what he teach you, he'll bring back to your remembrance. And, Amen. Man, when times and troubles are hard, the Holy Ghost will bring it back to your remembrance. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. When the doctor gives you that bad report, the Holy Ghost will bring it back to your remembrance. By his stripes, I am healed. Y'all better help me up in this place. I said the Holy Ghost. Thank you. 
Watch this. He said, now, I'm going to qualify what I just told you. In, in chapter 16, verse 13. See, Pastor Tim, watch this, watch this. I keep going. 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, huh? The spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into what? All truth. The reason why we got so many lies in the so much doc, false doctrine because the spirit of truth is not leading them. Because if the spirit of truth is leading me, then you're going to get truth out of me. Amen. Amen. If it's not me, see, me can mess you up, but he can't. So I got to let him operate through me to you. Woo! Somebody help me. And if he is speaking and not me, if he's speaking and not me, then you're going to be walking in truth because he's speaking and not me. Woo! But if me speak, you in trouble. And the reason why we got so many false doctrines the reason why so many of us are carried about by every wind of doctrine. Come on now. Come on. Because when the word is coming forth, you can't discern anything. The, the cares of this life. Jesus said, he that have an ear to hear, let him hear. Because you got an ear, but you ain't hearing. Woo. Somebody say amen. And you got folks sitting in the congregation think they've already arrived. Yeah. See, see. I don't have an ear to hear nothing. Yeah. I don't need that. See. And the devil got somebody round the corner waiting on you. Mm -hmm. To feed you with some wind. Come on. Because you're not listening to the spirit when he's speaking. Woo. He said, how be it he, when the spirit of truth has come, he shall guide you into what? All truth. For he shall speak, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and will show you things to come. First Corinthians, I'm almost done. Watch this. Boy, that's some good word. First Corinthians. See, I didn't, no man taught me this. The Holy Ghost did. Well, you got to spend time with God. <laughs> Watch this. I'm going to show you something. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Now catch this. Because I know what the Bible says. He's gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some pastors, some evangelists, some prophets. He gave some, excuse me, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. I know what, I know what the Bible says, but I'm going to show you what the teacher did. The one that the Holy Ghost, because every gift that you have is of God. It's not yours. That's why I'm not moved by brothers tomorrow. I have to, I, I heal people. No, you don't. <laughs> Brother, I don't care how long you've been saved. I know in whom I believe. Come on, somebody. I know what the Bible says. Brother, you ain't nothing. I can go to this sister right here and get healed. If God said healing is in her, then she needs to lay hands on me. Somebody. God said, you want your healing? Go to this sister. Sister, you need to lay hands on me. Come on. If God, if God confirm it, she said, Brother, I feel like I need to lay hands on God and confirm that thing, then guess what? He can heal me through her. Because the gift's not yours. <laughs> Somebody help me. He, he, he moves through us. It's the Holy Spirit. He's not confined by us. Woo! That's why a person that heals somebody can get sick because it ain't them doing the heal. Mm. Boy, this is good stuff. First Corinthians chapter 2 and I'm done. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not in, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God this is Paul for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified and I was with you in, the, in weakness and in fear and in much troubling and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom Woo. you got to 
got to be careful when you hear a brother with a whole bunch of intellect and no revelation. Because it's a whole lot of intellect in the pulpit. Your title don't mean nothing. Brother, are you getting revelation? Because is there a revelation, there's an illumination. Come on, somebody. See, God is not, what illumination means? To enlighten me. Okay. And what's come on? I don't know a man, I don't, I, nothing is revealed unless the light come on. Because when God reveals something, he illuminates you. And then there's a manifestation after the illumination. Are y'all with me? So your intellect don't illuminate anything. That's called man's wisdom. But man can make it look like he know a whole bunch of words with his intellectual words. Yes, amen. And because you don't have an ear to hear, my, 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 you'll be carried away by every wind of doctrine. Man, preach, brother, that brother preaching, and you don't even know what he's talking about. You leave the place the same way you came in. You jumping up and down because the word is so intellectually good. But when you leave the place, you're still in the same mess. Why? Because you didn't even get a revelation of what he was saying. Yes, His words went right over your head. It just sound good. Yes, yes, amen. So, watch this. He said, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Well, yeah. I see this all day, every day. Folks' faith in man's wisdom. Uh -huh. And the wisdom of this world is foolish to God. Yes, it is. He take the wisdom in their own craftiness. Uh -huh. That's what the you that's in the Bible. Watch this. How be it we speak, say speak, speak. wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom. Say speak. speak. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even hidden, the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, but as it is written, say written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed, say revealed, revealed. them unto us by who? The for the Spirit what? The Spirit Yea, the what? The deep things of God. The Spirit searched the deep things of God. Okay. Now watch this. For no man knoweth the things of man save the spirit which is in man. Even so the things of God know no man but the what? No man know the things of God but the what? And if you have the spirit of God, then you should know the things of God. Hold on, watch this. Watch this. He said, now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is what? Of God. That we might know, that we might know, say we might know. The things that are freely what? See, a lot of people are bound because they don't know what has been given to them. See, I know what's been given to me. Huh? Freely. I know who I am in Christ. Come on, somebody. Somebody say amen. amen. Now watch this. He says, which things also we speak, say speak. speak. Not in the words of man's wisdom teaches. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. But which the Holy Ghost what? Yes. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now, the reason why I told you to say the word speak, because that's my job. My job, my, my office is to speak. I speak, he teach. <laughs> Come on, somebody. See, he, he gives me revelation, teaches me. Now he said, now you go and speak what I've taught. 
and when you speak, I'll teach. Yes, amen. Wow. Well, what do I say? On the day of Pentecost, the Bible said they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake as the Spirit gave the language. Woo! Y'all, 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 y'all better help me. But it takes faith to speak and the Holy Ghost gives the language. The reason why people don't speak in tongues because they don't have the faith to speak because the Holy Ghost does the work. All you got to do is just speak. And if you're called to be a teacher, the teacher just has to speak and the Holy Ghost teach. Y'all better help me. In other words, what Jesus said, apart from me in church, you So my job is to speak. And the Holy Ghost said, I'll teach. And then God, Jesus told the apostles, he said, when you come before these men, don't worry about what you're going to say, because it's not you that's saying it. It'll be the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. So here's why you need, now this is what, this is why the Bible says, know them that are over you in the Lord. Honor them, come on, follow their faith. Come on, somebody. It says follow their faith. Why? Because I'm in a position, I, I, I'm not a baby in the word. Now watch this, God uses me and my faith to teach you. Yes, amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You're just an instrument. Elder McGowan and Elder Paul are just instruments. Amen. When they come up here, the Holy Ghost, I pray, is teaching through them. Somebody say amen. Now, I got to stand before God what, what I speak. Come on, somebody. And if I'm speaking by the Holy Ghost, watch this. You can't even say Jesus is Lord. You remember before, man, I wasn't running around here talking, thank you, Jesus, when I was drinking. <laughs> Let me read something right away. I'm telling you, man. I know I realize I'm nothing, Minister Nothing. I ain't nothing. I'm never ain't nothing. I'm somebody now because of Christ. But Tim ain't nothing. Come on, somebody. Without Christ, you ain't you're nothing. You're nothing. You're nothing. You're nothing. Watch this. It says in 1 Corinthians. Wherefore I, in verse 3, it says, Wherefore I give to you understanding that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. And no man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. That means, before I got saved, Brother Tony, what, what you running around talking about? Thank you, Lord! With a, with a, with, with a bottle of Hennessy in your hand. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> hey, hey, Shorty, let me get them numbers from you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so, somebody say amen. I know you like, I'm just trying, you all know I like to illustrate things. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. That, that one going down before you got saved. No, amen. Twenty million women. And say thank you, Jesus, when you fit. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. But when you got saved, yes. how is it you start saying, Thank you, Lord? Yeah. Yeah. You want to say, before you got saved, boy, I'm a lucky brother. That's some yeah. good luck that 7 Eleven. Woo! I'm a lucky brother. Huh? Now you talk about you blessed. So, Yes. You couldn't even say thank you, Jesus, without Jesus being in you. Yes, that's right. Amen. No man can say Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Yes, amen. Right. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. You need the Holy Ghost to say thank you, Jesus. Amen. You need the Holy Ghost for it to mean something. Amen. Why? Because you can say thank you, Jesus, like the, you can say, Devil, I command you to come out like them seven sons of Sceva. Right. Yes, amen. See why? Because the Holy Ghost is the power, Jesus is the authority. Yes. And they didn't have no power trying to operate in that authority. Y'all better help me. Come on. Somebody help me up in this place. They said, in the name of Jesus, who Paul preached, we command you to come out. Them demons said, man, we know Paul and Jesus, but who are you? 
in this food yes. and I got to make sure it's right before I serve it yes. come on somebody Amen. God is making sure the house is right yes. before he serves us to the people yes. come on somebody Amen. we got to set our agendas to the side put God first in every area of your life and watch what God does Watch what God, God won't fail you, y'all. He can't. He cannot fail. It's impossible for God to fail. But you truly got to give it to him. He's real. Paul said, if only in this life we had hope, we are men most miserable. My hope is not in this life. My hope is that I'm going to see the Lord. The Bible says in his presence is the fullness of joy. And we have the Holy Spirit right now, which is a down payment of our inheritance. That word earnest means down payment with a guarantee. God has given you the earnest of the Spirit. God, in other words, God has given you a down payment with a guarantee. God said to show you that you got eternal life right now. You don't have to wait for it. I got it right now. Why? Because I got a down pillow with a guarantee. Man. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. I'm absent from the Lord. Why I'm here in this body. <laughs> That's what Paul said. I'm absent from the Lord. Why I'm 
I'm here in this body. But if I'm absent from the pot, woo, I'm in the presence of God. Why? Because you are a new creature. And the Christ being you, the body's already dead. Because of sin. Tell your neighbor, I'm a new creature. Tell your other neighbor, you're a new creature. Come on, give God a hand praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you this morning, Lord. We love you this morning, Lord. Boy, yes, we do. Magnify you. Thank you for making us new, Lord. Thank you for making us new, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. New creature in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that we have a divine nature in this world. That you've given us divine power. Divine authority. It's all because of you. 